So recently, I've been getting some really good success with a Neo Carried. I feel like I've said that so many times now, but it's true. I've been getting great success with my Neo Carried in a shrimp. So yeah, quick recap. In here, we've got cherries and a mix of chocolates and everything, really. <laughs> this is doing really well. There's always babies popping up everywhere. Oh, look at that. Right as I said that, we're we going to pick it up. There we go. There's a baby on the filter, which is also, oh, and there's a, a mummy at the back there with a saddle on the back. And then at the top here's a shrimp forest. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is what we like to see as shrimp keepers. Very, very happy MD. <laughs> and that is not just the only one. There's quite a few in there as well. Like, And moving on next to it, we've got the really carbons in this one. Uh, where are you guys? Guys? Oh, they're not hiding. There we go. There's one. Just sort of perched on that pebble there. So there's a group of about 15 in here. There's one hiding behind there as well. Yeah, they're dotted in about, you know, they're doing really, really well. Now on this table, oh, let me tidy this up a bit. Probably should have done that before I started filming, but never mind. Uh, in here, I've got some super reds, some super red cherries. We've got some blues and we got some orange rillies. Let me sat on these little bowls now for quite some time. It's time to set up the next shrimp tank. So I've recently just set up this racking system. At the moment, it's just plant storage on the bottom here, but we're gonna change that today. I'm thinking this tank here. Now a proper fish keeper YouTuber guy would clean up this tank before we use it. But to be honest, it's clean enough. There's only a few little bits on it, so that'll do. What I will do is move it across so it's sort of doing its own thing. <laughs> now I saw some cool little like cuppy things, some suctiony cups online, and I've ordered some. They've arrived, and I think that's what I wanna do for this tank. So here they are. I've got way more than I've got here, but I've just got two out to show you. I've got little baby ones here. Look at that tiny little thing. <laughs> and then we've got a bigger one here with a cracked smash bottom. And that will explain to you what's going on with my finger because I just stuck it on here as a test to see how good it was. As I tried to pull it off, I forgot it was made of glass. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> This one is not made of glass. Look, so we've got plastic ones, absolutely fine. And then the larger ones are made of the glass. Now they have the suction bit at the top back. I forgot and I just tried to rip it off. It cracked it and it's completely sliced my finger open. Completely my fault, obviously. You know, obviously that's gonna break if you try and rip it off really hard at an angle like I did. I just completely forgot. So I've super glued my finger back together. Yes, super glue. I don't know if that's safe to do, but it stops the bleeding straight away. And we can carry on with the bleed, with the bleed. We can carry on with the build. <laughs> so the tank is 1.5 foot or something like, I'll put all the stuff up here somewhere. Um, and the lighting is just a cheap strip light. It's exactly the same as the ones that we've got over there on the other rack. And it works so well, as you can see, I mean, I didn't plant this that long ago, and look, the Hydrocotyl Japan is just going everywhere. Love that plant. Gives such a good sort of, I don't know, miniature look and suits small scapes really well. Look at that sunburst on there. Wow, so nice. But yeah, I'll leave links in the description and pin first comment to all this stuff so you guys can buy it if you want to, including these. And we've got some nice filters coming up later on. The filter I've ordered is a small sponge bio filter thing. Um, it's coming in the post. It's the same. I've already got one actually. Yeah, it's the same as this one here, but it's a smaller version because this tank's much bigger. And the tank we're putting it in is more like this size, but OptiWhite. When I say OptiWhite, this one's got like the black edge in, which looks really cool on these, but uh, I've got some spare tanks that aren't like that, as in these ones here. So they actually used them. This one's gonna look so good, isn't it? It's gonna look plush. Right, so as I've done before, I wanna start the build by putting in a substrate system, and I'm just gonna go with Aquasoil for a base layer. So that's just a couple of sort of grain sizes thick, three or four grain sizes thick. I don't know what that means. Just make of it what you will. But you don't want a huge amount. I mean, you don't need it if you're not gonna be planting into it. That's gonna be enough for buffering capabilities anyway. Plus remember, we're filling up all those cups with it as well. So we've got all of our bubbles there. I don't know if I'm gonna to need to use all of those, probably not, but we'll just get going and see how it goes. I don't wanna put them in like a uniform pattern. I think that would just look a bit like, I don't know, like everything doesn't have to be symmetrical all the time. And the problem is when you do that, sometimes stuff can look more out of place than if you just go a bit random. So I'm gonna dot them about in like a few big ones, few little ones, just see how it goes really. I'm gonna have the uh, filter on this side. So I'm gonna do that back and this 
corner part here and I think that'll work well and then it'll be sort of like a really cool viewing thing. <laughs> There we go, I think I'll go with that for the placement. Look at them just floating there. I've got one left over, I'll put that in another tank or something. Don't wanna overdo it, but that looks quite cool, doesn't it? I've got lots of um, rounded things, that's the wrong word, like toys. That's, again, the wrong word. Shrimp stuff to go on the bottom as well, so that should look good. Just keep that round theme going. Okay, so I suppose I need to fill all these up with aquasol now. Come on, tell me that isn't cool. I know it's very different, but sometimes you've got to try different things. So I actually want to put in now some of the decorations we're going to be using down this bottom area, and then we can decide on some planting to go in these little planters. Because at the moment, I haven't got a clue. All I know is I kind of want to keep it like very green. I think that'll work well. So one of the first things to go in is the shrimp coconut shell. It's not a shrimp coconut shell. It's just a coconut shell with Java moss all over the top but it's like the triple whole thing. It provides cover, everything for the babies. So they should feel safe. I'm gonna put this almost central. Stick it right, right about there I think looks pretty good. Why not? <laughs> and then I've also got some moss balls to go in as well. So here we have some moss balls. Now, if I just put them in the water like that, well look, here we go. They just float. And, uh, oh, come back, make sure there's no shrimp on that. <laughs> No, we're good. So what I find best to do here is just to split them open. I can't really do this one-handed, but you split them open from the center. Actually, yes, I can. There we go. Split them open from the center outwards like that, look. And the top still looks pretty much the same. And then you can put them on top of a pebble and glue it down with the cyanoacrylate super glue gel. There we go. I've always got some to hand. <laughs> this stuff is inert and safe for the shrimp, safe for plants, safe for fish. Goes basically like a hard plastic straight away. Now I know I say that a lot, but for newcomers watching, they do need to hear that because glue and fish, shrimp, it kind of sounds worrying, doesn't it? Anyway, it's all good. So yeah, we can cover those stones completely so that we've just got the green on show and it will look like a solid ball. Well, it is a solid ball, but it won't float anywhere and it'll just look great in the, sh in the shrimp tank then. Here's an example of me doing it before. There you go. That one there was much smaller when I put it in there. It's already grown out massive. You can also just place them onto stones as well, like I have here, and keep them kind of flat looking, like that one in the back. They don't always have to be round at all. So yeah, it just looks good, doesn't it? They're really good. They're really good little things that just look so soft and cushiony and squidgy. Right, a quick flash forward and I've prepped seven, two slightly different colors because I bought them from different suppliers at different times. They've just been sat around in my tanks. These are very, very vibrant, aren't they? But it's quite good to have the different colors. I just put them in. I don't know how I'm gonna do this yet, but in groups, who knows? I don't know. Oh, look at that. How cute is that looking? I need to leave space, you see, for some botanicals, though, and for my mineral rocks to go in here. I've got a pack. Yeah, there we go, look. Mineral rocks, shrimp mineral rocks. These help with their uh, shells coming off, so when they shed their shells, they need minerals to obviously replace that. Some people take out the shells, you should leave them in there. It's like a casing. It's, it's basically they grow out of them and then a new form is revealed, but yeah, there's there's quite a few in there. I'll only need half of those, but those those to go in as well. Oh, we're coming alive, we're coming alive. I'm getting excited as I'm picturing the shrimp in there breeding and jumping around and that. 
Anyway, I think it's time to start putting some actual plants in these little bubbles. Like I say, I'm gonna go with green ones. I'm gonna put them in now before I fill it up because I feel like it's gonna be impossible to get them to stay in the aqua soil um, once the water's in there and allowing it all to sort of move around. So what are we gonna choose? Well, one of the first plants I want again is this Hydrocotyl Japan. I've got something here and it looks good. And I've, oh, oh, by the way, for you, those of you that don't, that don't know, this is my other studio. I've got two studios here back to back and here are all the tanks and now I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I've also got some Hydrocotyl Japan in here, look. Now this tank hasn't been set up that long at all, but it's already growing crazy. So I'm gonna trim off some of this and use it again. Hello, there's some of my favorite fish in here, look. It's the gold laser quarries. Just keep going around in circles, round and round, round and round and round they go. <laughs> Okay, instead of hacking that right back, I've just written, oh, did miss some. Come back here, where do you think you're going? Gotcha. Yeah, anyway, I just remembered, instead of hacking that back, it's still quite new. Um, it's overgrown, but not crazily. I've got loads over in this tank here. This is my Platy um, Island Scape. This is getting a big trim back soon anyway. So over here, look at that lot. There's loads there, sorry, no, not you. <laughs> yeah, back there, loads of it, I'll use that. So as is quite often the case, the first one you do is wrong. So I put way too much in that one and it was sort of overhanging. I did less in that one and I went back, cut it in half so it's just sat nicely inside. And then it can grow out however it, however it wants. But I quite like the look of that one draping down. It probably won't stay like that when the water's in there, but still. So that's Hydrocotyl Japan. Should mix it up a bit, maybe some s repens something like that. A nice little stem of s repens in that bottom one. And then maybe some pearl weed as well. I don't know, just see how it goes. Okay, I think that's it for the time being. That's looking so cool, isn't it? Very, very different. Uh, I'm just gonna fill it up with water now and then we can move on to the next stages. So that is now all filled up. Now I've got a filter to go in, but it isn't the one I initially intended. Here is the one I'm gonna use. This is a little nano one that I had in a different tank. I did have it in this shrimp tank. Oh look, they're all going crazy. <laughs> it's because I just disturbed all the water. I put a different filter in the back there, slightly larger, because this tank's a little bit bigger than our new one. And this little one will suit the uh, smaller tank a lot better. I did buy another one of these, but it's much too big for, um, for that smaller tank. That's absolutely perfect, look. So there's not too much flow, it's just gently pushing along at the surface there. Pushing that flow along there, just circulating it, which is gonna be perfect for keeping crud off the bottom. You can actually see all the air bubbles down here, look, moving along. And that's, that's how you know the flow is going where you want it to go. So the tank is almost done and ready to put our shrimp in. I just wanna put a couple of botanicals in here. I think they're gonna look great, but also they're gonna improve the water quality for the shrimp, lowering the pH. They also generate biofilm and all of that. And you just see the shrimp doing their little peck, pecky pecky thing all over it. Um, it's just another point of interest as well. So here is what we've got. We've got alder cones, we've got katapa bark, we've got large katapa leaves and like mini katapa leaves. Now, I want to use all of them. <laughs> this looks really cool, doesn't it? But not too many, just a, a couple of each, uh, maybe one of these sticks. And then it should look like a nice little color pop that separates the green from the dark brown. The problem is though, is if I put all of these in like that, they'll just all float to the surface and just go around in the flow. So I'm gonna glue them all to little pebbles and things like that and just make, that'll make sure that they sink down. For the elder cones, I'm just gonna take some out of say this tank and replace them with the new ones that will eventually just sink down.
Okay, I think that's looking fantastic, but there's still one more thing that the tank needs. And there we go, we now have absolutely everything in place that shrimp will need. Now I'm not gonna be putting tons of shrimp in here, I just wanna put a small colony and let them grow out. It's much more rewarding that way, if I'm honest. Can't wait for them to have babies. And the shrimp that we're gonna be putting in are in this little vase here. So this is the orange really shrimp. Um, hopefully you're picking up that one there. There's quite a few. Let me take all this out so we can see how many are actually in there. So it looks like we've got 10 there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten. And um, one of them, that one right in the middle, is actually buried already, which is great. Two reasons why that's great. One, it means we've got males, and two, it means we've got females. <laughs> and quite a few of them are saddled. I mean, I always find for some reason my shrimp do well when I just leave them in these little bowls. I've had these now for about three weeks. We're getting buried shrimp and everything. I've even stopped doing water changes now because we've got enough floating plants, everything growing so well in there. I mean, why am I setting up, setting up all these sort of really, really nice shrimp tanks when <laughs> that's all I need to do? <laughs> no, no, that's not as fun though, is it? There we go, looking good straight away. Right, there's the release, going over to that mineral rock. I don't know why, but I've always found that the shrimp seem to be attracted to the, the whiteness of the minerals, especially the young uns, the babies, the shrimplets. They always, I can find, if they're newborn, they can be found on, it's so bright, isn't it? Can I turn that down a little? There we go, that's a little bit better, isn't it? Um, but now, the, oh look, they, they're using their little house straight away. I mean, I say using it. They're clearly just walking in that direction. But we're going to go with using it. Look, and you've got some nice little snail friends on the roof. Oh, I'm really, really pleased with how this one's turned out. I mean, it's not a natural look by any means, is it? It's kind of avatar in a way. <laughs> shrimp avatar. <laughs> but no, it's, it's cool. It's something different. And for these little shrimp tanks, it's really, really fun to be able to experiment, try out different things and see what they look like. And it means it's something that we can maybe try and uh, reproduce in a larger scale, I don't know, at a later date. Maybe I'd do it for four foot tank with loads of giant fish bowls i mean that would be so hard to actually pull off but it could be pretty cool now in other tanks i have been putting lots of floating plants in the shrimp tank to avoid algae but of course that is not what we want especially when we're trying to do a breeding project so i'm not putting any in this tank because it's it's hindering the progress of the colony and this actually means that i'll probably start to develop a lot more algae sooner on all the glass and i'll clean it obviously off the front panel because we want to be able to see panel pane yeah, one of those. I'll clean it off the front anyway and just leave it on everything else. And then when there are new babies, you will get more survived because they'll have that constant food source just to peck on. When shrimpless are first born, they don't actually move very much in terms of like, like they're not going to go from over here all the way over to the back. So they have to eat whatever's around that area. So it's all right having a feeding dish here for the adults, but that's not going to work for the shrimplets. Now, when I say shrimpless, you can barely even see them when they first come out. So we need to make sure that the surfaces have not only got all the biofilm on, but also they've got a nice little buildup of algae in that as well. And that'll work perfectly and our colony will be huge in no time. <laughs> 